What is happening, guys? Cowboy here, and we are back out on the boat. Hope it sees. Let's do hey, these stars. Isaac, how about a competition? Let's see who can catch the biggest fish. Don't be ridiculous. Fishing is a solitary battle. It's about meditation and self-control. Ooh, aren't you the philosophical one all of a sudden? <sighs> but I suppose. I can't deny I really want to put this rod to the test. Yeah, I know that feeling. Whenever I find a good sword, there's nothing I want to do more than to swing it. Sure enough. There's just something about good equipment that gets the blood pumping. Yeah. Although in my case, it's usually more like blood spurting. A bit too much blood either way, if you ask me. Listen, we're fishing no matter what. Wouldn't the competition be better for getting that blood of yours pumping? Fine. You're on. But we both know already how this is gonna end. <laughs> You can plan all the victory speeches you like, but fishing is like life. It doesn't always go the way you think it will. You ready? Let's do this. At what point did the Therian hunt turn into a contest? I want to go fishing. If you truly admired the fishies, you'd never dream of doing this to them. No matter how tasty the bait, it's a poor trade for a barbed hook in the lip and a cruel death in the unforgiving air. I don't admire fish. Fish exist to be caught and eaten, as far as I'm concerned. Can't argue there. Raw, boiled, or grilled with a little salt. You can't go wrong. <laughs> and if they're nothing but food to you, even their wretched squirms of agony can hold a kind of beauty. <laughs> <laughs> Old man Tenny sounds like he was a real goofball. Definitely. He used to say the weirdest things while we'd be fishing, just to make me laugh. Like what? Oh, it was all nonsense, but it was funny to me. The silly stuff like... Papero popero pippity poppity poo <laughs> Yeah, that's silly, all right. Those two look like they're having fun. Hey, Velvet! I've got your rod all set up for you! This thing could even catch a whale if you wanted to. The rest is up to you. Now get out there and fish up a big one. A Therian, you mean. Oh, might as well give it a shot. It's not like anyone else remembers what we're here for. <gasps> Something's pulling the line! Stay calm. Fishing isn't about strength, it's about timing. Oh, okay, got it. Here it comes. You ready? <laughs> Damn right I am. I'll fillet it before it can even land. If it's a Therian, don't you dare kill it. Now! Heave! Measure chest. Well, what do you know? Neither a fish nor a Therian. Well, shoot. Can't eat that. Oh. It looks like it fit you, though, Laffy said. Why don't you try it on? I concur. Maybe it'll bring out his unique personality. My unique personality, huh? See? What did I tell you? It looks great on you, Laffy said. You... you really think so? Yeah! Brings out your special charm, kiddo. Come on. Back to Therian fishing. <sighs> hey, you don't need to take it so seriously. I have to catch the Therian. Maybe then Velvet will see me for who I am. Uh, not a bite. Oh, quit your grumbling. Who was it who said fishing doesn't always go how you think it will? <laughs> Spoken like a true heartless pirate. Oh, hey! I've got something! <sighs> Fuck, just all treasure chests. Whoa! Looks like I'm next! <laughs> <sighs> Not a single decent catch. I think it's decent. Or not the set. Huh?
look all your own. Ah, the vagaries of youth. <laughs> you don't take half measures, do you, kid? Hmm? What's wrong, Luffy said? You look ridiculous. Take that off. Stop it! What do you know about me anyway? I... I know that looks silly on you. All you know is you're Luffy! <laughs> hey, Velvet! Something's pulling on your rod. Huh? Oh. It's a big one. Give it everything you've got. I know what I'm doing. The hell? It's... It's a big one, all right, but... A pot. Yay. <laughs> but what's a pot doing out here? There's something inside it. They're like, why you put our home out the water? I wish they'd stop making those noises. Watch out! They're armed to the squeak! And they're shouting, let freedom ring! Must you? A complete victory. I bet him to to smother him. What? Ah, he probably fell. No, so it's okay. That was scary. What is that? Be more careful before you approach a suspicious object. Не помог. Сейчас кого ничего найдем на этой арене. Квестики растут. What the fuck is this? Все какие-то лакерки с хилочками. What the fuck is going on? Why is there some French dude talking? Okay, well, that was weird as fuck, but uh... Looks like one of the... Okay, so it looks like I had a Twitch stream running that unmuted itself. That's... that's... You think Luffy would have stayed back? That has nothing to do with this! Hold on. There's something else inside. Zombies? Now we gotta fight the shambling dead? A zombo pot! For a bunch of dead guys, they're awfully, uh, flesh. Further support for the healthy octopus diet. <laughs> We're finished here. Let's go. An octopus army? A horde of undead? What the hell is this pot? Magnificent. To think I'd get to see one with my own eyes. Huh? Is there something special about this creepy old pot? <laughs> creepy, you say? That's why these things need to be left to the professionals. Listen and behold. This is none other than a water jug made by the potter Groon during King Clauden's reign. It was a legendary once-in-a-millennium masterpiece, but it was lost in the Second Warring States period 200 years ago. Assertive yet not ostentatious, the piece draws you in with its stately curves and the subtle shimmer of its colors, which belie a hidden savagery. <sighs> Two lectures in one day? <sighs> yeah. He's talking gibberish, but that's men in general, I suppose. The lost glazing technique of the Orosaurin is so vibrant, it looks like it could start moving at any moment. Oh, oh and start moving it did. Look out! The pot's 
a demon. Pandora pot. Whatever you guys do, make sure you don't smash it. So can I slash it? That's even worse. Stop arguing and fight already. Started off a joke, but definitely uh, got pumped up. The mastery coming out of that. Only available off there, and I sold right trigger after a second hit of a combo to activate. It's an easy way a large distance. It's finally decided to behave itself. Wait, Velvet! Don't eat it! It's a pot. I'm not gonna eat it. I guess there weren't any Therians to be found here after all. Yeah, if there'd have been any, you'd think Ol' Aizen's Reaper curse would have drawn him out. Oh, so that's why all we caught today were weird, useless things. Right, I forgot about the curse. So all this was Aizen's fault, huh? Funny how quickly you get used to it. Oh, my power didn't end up helping us out at all. Nope. Hmm. But I know you're not the type to give up after a little setback. Isn't that right, Fee? Huh? Fee? It's your nickname. Not a whole lot of thought put into it, but... You're you. You're Fee. 
it. Fee. I like it. It has personality. Thanks. Of course, if you still feel like giving up. No, I'm gonna find us the next Earth Pulse point. Oh, hey. There's something else inside the pot. This golden luster, it's... It's Orichalcum! I get it now. This must be where that ship sank all those years ago. The one Kurogane told us about. Hell yeah! Kurogane might actually be able to make me an Orichalcum sword. Nice find, Aizen. You too, Lafayette. It wasn't easy, but we didn't come away empty-handed. And just getting a chance to fish again was lots of fun. Yeah, I had a really good time too. Even I was entertained. Especially your little costume show, kiddo. The sun's going down soon. Let's head back to Titania. All that I can't get. Oh, hey, Velvet. You don't mind if I give Kudogane that orichalcum you fished up, do you? Doesn't matter to me. But do you really think he can make a weapon with that? I don't know. What does the expert think? Conventionally, no, it's impossible. But when has convention ever stopped a demon? I won't argue that. We're dealing with the hardest metal in existence. But I'm ready to cast aside all doubt to focus everything on forging my greatest creation. If anybody can do it, it's you. Good luck, Kurogane. Yeah, best of luck. If you can make Rokuro stronger, you'll be helping me out too. Lavi said, I spy, I spy! Uh, I can't, Kamawana. I I've got stuff to... I spy with my little eye! Something that starts with V! <sighs> okay, I'll try. Uh, is it... Velvet? <laughs> uh, no fair! How'd you do it so fast? <laughs> Wait, Kamawana, I'm sorry. You don't have to cry. <laughs> Poor V. Have you been practicing your dove impression, Velvet? What? No. Now, now, a performer in Mogilu's menagerie has to be more diligent than that. What if we're stopped at a checkpoint and the guards ask you to perform a trick? If that happens, I'll show them my trick where I devour an entire witch faster than the blink of an eye. Oh, that would be a sight indeed. But seriously, if you ever want some magic tricks up your sleeve, let me know and I'll teach you some. Just 10,000 gold each. What else do they have in common? What are you up to? I'm compiling everything we know about Earth Pulse points, starting with what the ones in Ward Forest and Polymedes have in common. I'll compare those points with the ones that didn't have any Therians. Then, I'll factor in everything I currently know about the Abbey's deployments. Once that's done, I'll match all that information against what we know about the locations Lafayette was able to sense. When that's completed, we should be able to tell which locations are more likely to house a Therian. You're really going all out, aren't you? Must you sound so incredulous? If you're going to do something, then give it your all. There is no other way to live. R right. I'm counting on you then. I'm not doing this for you. This is for me and for Lafayette. Do you even understand why that boy's trying so hard? Yeah, I do. Hey, what do you say we track down another Therian? Sure. 
From what I can tell, the next closest Earth pulse point is near the center of Midgand. Midgand, huh? The capital's not far from there. I wonder how things are now that Griffin's gone, though. Probably crazy. Only one way to find out. Maybe so, but Aizen's not here, you know. You're right. I haven't seen him in a while. We should probably ask Benwick where he wandered off to. Yeah. Hmm? Uh, hold on. There's a letter here. On pretty cutesy stationery, too. Let's just have a quick look-see. As the cold turns bitter and the snow piles up on the mountains, I cannot help but think of you and hope you are in good cheer. As for myself, I am the same as ever, although I recently acquired a rare item that I shall be sending your... It's rude to read other people's letters, you know. Yeah, but how else are we supposed to find out whose it is? Does it say who the sender is? Uh... Uzfamewu Wexov. Who the hell is that? Probably someone on this island, if I had to guess. Hey! Anybody lose a letter? Do any of these folks look like the type to write a fancy letter? Point taken. It could be one of the pirates. Why don't we go to the docks and ask around? Fine, just don't forget our mission. Oh god, we're asking some pirates a couple questions. Well, that... It's not like this is going to detract from the overall mission. There's Aizen. That wasn't exactly hard to find. No reply this time either? Eh, but she's doing okay. I can say that much. That's good to hear. I can rest easy then. Now's about getting that pot wrapped. I's got this new sunflower print, huh? How's that sound? Hmm. Yeah, that one's cute enough. Let's go with that. Did... Did he just say cute? <clears throat> Help you with something? Someone dropped this letter. Do you have any idea who it might... <laughs> you didn't read it, did you? Wait, it's yours? We didn't read it. Much. You really didn't read it? N no of course not. Put this letter in with the package. Who's got it? When you ship with the Turtles Express, rest assured your mail is in good hands. If you're done here, we're ready to head out. Our destination is Midgand. Yeah, I'm all set. Was he sending a gift to someone? And with a letter, too. Gotta be a lady friend, that's for sure. You think? Either way, that letter was really polite. And did you see that penmanship? Yeah, I didn't know old Reaps had it in him. I can hear you two, you know. Ah! Yikes. Better watch what we say from now on. I noticed you've come up with your little name for the kid. You sure are the sentimental type, aren't you? Oh? Calling him Fee doesn't cost me anything, and it's not like I gave it much thought. That may be the case, but no one else has taken even that token effort. And in doing so, I wonder if maybe you were trying to encourage him to be his own being. After all, one requires a name before he can consider his own identity. Having been given a name, he realizes he is his own entity, separate from others, and a certain formless essence comes to life inside him. And you're the one who set that process in motion for the kid. Whether you intended to or not, you changed him from a puppet into a living being. So what's your point? I've been with you since the start of this journey, haven't I? Wouldn't kill you to give me a nickname, would it? I've never really thought of us as being that close. And besides, you just forced your way into the group. Come now! I know you've got a bigger heart than that! Surely you have it in you to give a nickname to a dear friend! We're not dear friends. And even if we were, I'm not good at nicknames anyway. Please, I'm begging you! Okay then. Magi. Oh, come on, that's so <laughs> obvious! Can't you put some heart into it for your dear friend? Fine. Lou. Do I look like an old man to you? You're not even trying! Okay then. Witchy Mick Witcherton. Interesting. Well, if I had to rank it against 1,000 other nicknames, I'd probably put it at number 1,011. A nickname needs to have charm. It needs to leave a lasting impression. Sure then. Hattie. Now you're just saying what you see! Book skirt. <laughs> That's not any better either! Ms. Creepy Eyes. That's just an insult! Look, no nicknames based on 
from what you see, and especially no slandering! Lil' Miss Witch who smiles around you but stabs you in the back when you're not looking. Hey, that's personal information! Look, I told you. I'm not good at coming up with nicknames. Forget it! I should have known this wouldn't work! Bitch Witch. Hey, Aizen? Is there, uh, anything we can do about the Prince's Hawk? Griffin, I mean. Every day, it goes out on these hunts or whatever, and brings back the weirdest stuff. It's making a real mess out of the deck. Hawk's hunt? What's the big deal? Well, yeah. At first it was bringing back good stuff like seaweed and fish, things we could cook with. Sure, I was glad for a while. But then it started to escalate. Now we're talking 150 kilo amber cans and 350 kilo killer swordfish that it's catching. That's not a bad thing, is it? It just means more to eat. It is when they're being dropped from the sky onto the deck. Especially those killer swordfish and razor sharp bills. What if somebody gets run through by one? Can't you just warn the prince that his bird needs to be more careful? Yeah, we could, but he looks so happy watching his hawk, I'd hate to spoil it for him. Yeah, the prince looks so happy whenever Griffin is flying free. He kept grinning and asking Grocky all nice-like if he wanted to fly some more. Grocky? That's what Kamawana kept calling Griffin. She says she came up with it by combining Griffin and Hawk. <sighs> This is probably the first time in the prince's life that he's tasted any freedom. His whole life he's only done what duty dictated of him. Letting Griffin fly was his first free act. To the prince, Grocky is an extension of who he is. So what are we going to do? Nothing, really. It's not like it really hurt anybody. But it's punctured some major holes on the deck! I'm sure even the prince knows when to rein it in. Let him have a little fun. He deserves it. I don't know about all that. I'd say the prince is letting his newfound freedom get the better of him. Hey, I was just up on deck and it looks like Griffin's caught an elephant tuna this time. An elephant tuna? That's the really big tuna that can swallow a killer whale whole, right? That almost sounds like a demon to me. Yep, huge fish, gills like elephant ears. I saw it myself. From the looks of it, I wouldn't be surprised if it was a demon. It's crazy valuable. On a good day, it can fetch 20 million gold on the market. But there's something ominous about seeing it hovering in the air above the ship. 20 million gold? I take back everything I said. The Prince and Griffin can do whatever they want. Did she say above the ship? Oh, hell. Benwick, we need to stop Prince Percival. Aye, aye, sir. Hey, don't drop that on the deck! Are you listening to me? Doki? Oh. May I ask you a question? What? You're an Earth Moloch, yes? Why live on the sea when your kind sinks in water? I live on the sea because I'm an Earth Moloch. I'd be curious to hear more. Eifried used to go on about how we should accept what we were born with. But one time he joked about the idea of a pirate who couldn't swim, and he laughed and laughed. I wanted to clobber him right then and there, but it wouldn't have changed the fact that I can't swim. I didn't want some predestined elemental affinity to control who I was. Instead, I underwent tough training to overcome it. Well, I guess that's one way to approach it. Did this training of yours bear any fruit? Well, as soon as I stepped into a river, a big flood brought down a landslide from the mountains and swallowed me up. Then, when I tried going into a lake, the seaweed suddenly multiplied and tangled around my body, nearly drowning me. And then, finally, when I tried jumping into the ocean, a huge whirlpool formed with me at its very center. Huh. <sighs> the Reaper's Curse at play? As far as I'm concerned, my Earth Affinity and my Reaper's Curse aren't much different, in that they've both shackled me since I came into being. This is about pushing and challenging the constraints I was born with. Hmm. Huh. So, did you eventually learn how to swim? Pretty much, yeah. As long as I never let go of my portable life preserver. <laughs> oh, huh. It's funny. Just imagine the eyes of running around with a pair of swimmies. A new 
scout ships. Aizen, what happened to those octopuses? Dial and Kurogane took them to the kitchen. They said they were going to make dinner for Kamoana. They're going to feed demons to her? Atheria needs malevolence to survive. That's why they carried them off alive. What do they plan on making? Octopus ink pasta with takoyaki and fried octopus on the side, and Helavisian octopus carpaccio. Do they have a takoyaki pan here at the prison? Kurogane hammered one out with some iron, along with a large pot for the pasta. <laughs> Still looking like that? Takoyaki would hit the spot right about now, though. Octopus ink pasta, huh? Like squids, octopuses release ink as a defensive mechanism. But theirs is made of different stuff and is used in other ways. Squid ink is stickier and acts like a decoy. But octopus ink spreads out like a cloud of smoke. But squid ink has 30 times the savory flavor. So octopus ink isn't used in pasta all that often. Laffy told me the same thing. He said that's why octopus ink pasta isn't very good. Laffy said that? Yeah, so I ended up not making it for him. But I wonder... I guess it doesn't matter, since I can't taste it now. I'll taste it for you then. So make me some octopus ink pasta sometime, alright? Alright, and I'll be sure to make some that doesn't come from demons. I'm hey, skin. who did Aizen send that letter and cooking pot to anyway? I don't want to think about it. That walloping still stings. You've got to be curious though, right? Maybe. It was serious stuff. Whoever it is must be important to him. A lover, maybe? Aizen's lover? A child wouldn't be happy with that cooking pot, and a man wouldn't want it wrapped up so pretty. A young woman with Aizen's tastes, then. He'd be bound to fall for a miraculous match like that, right? I don't know. I bet she's that girl with the yellow umbrella. You really have a thing for her, don't you? I do not! That's not what I mean! Then pray tell, what do you mean? Huh? Eavesdropping, Eleanor? How unseemingly rude of you. Besides, Luffy said is free to like whomever he chooses. You're one to talk about eavesdropping, Moggy Lou. Anyway, it's just that the sunflower design on the wrapping reminded me of her. Now that you mention it, but does it really matter? He has someone to write to in any case. True. I can't help but feel a bit envious. What a nice way of summing it up, Velvet. So you were eavesdropping too, then? Uh. He eyes and damn, too many fucking skits coming in. We're gonna wrap this one up here, just because I don't want to jump into another skit. We'll start the episode off with that one. Um, but we're gonna close on out, and it looks like we're gonna be heading off for another Earth post point in a little bit. So stay tuned, and we'll catch you guys next time.